um, go ahead and find our breakout rooms, maybe. Hmm. I am. All right, we're going to put it in the chat because this is a different license I have for Zoom and I am not um, seeing that option. So you're going to put in the chat one thing you don't want to do and one thing you do want to do. And then I'm going to make Jeremy host so I can pass the baton. All right. So we're getting, um, putting some things in here. Um, well, let's see, what do we see here? Any ones you want to call out, Jenny? Yeah, I see, um, you know, not wanting to, uh, so wanting to learn things daily, don't want to be micromanaged. Um, interesting and fulfilling, they want that. Um, don't want, um, you know, that, that grind I'm seeing people wanting to avoid the grind, um, and, you know, wanting to have that being able to connect in, um, and have that purpose and meaning and, and fulfillment. Jeremy, I know that's something that you've sought out in your career. Oh, I have yeah. done that myself. Um, <laughs> so you're speaking to the choir here. Um, yeah, um, really appreciate that. Some great stuff there. That's awesome. Well, I got to say, I'm so happy that you led this um, part of the session because um, there is just such a depth to the feelings around work. You know, I think sometimes um, people feel like, oh, it's just a job, just got to get through the week, just got to get through the day. But the reality is in 2023, so much of our identity, so much of our egos is tied up in work. And so for better or worse, understanding how to parse those emotions, understanding how to make sense of what's going on in the world right now is a huge part of what we have to do. So thank you so much, Jenny, for calling that out. Now, that being said, I got to tell you all that when I was a career coach, that was the thing that I was worst at because the only thing that I really cared about after I had been laid off or one of the people that I loved was laid off was how do we get revenge? And I think the best revenge is to get a better job than the one you had before. So no matter where you are, whether you're in grad school, whether you're coming off of a layoff or worried about it, let me show you how you can fight back the best possible way, maybe not the most emotionally healthy way, but by building a career that serves your talents and one that you deserve. So all that said, you know, I love to ask my pop quizzes. I got to start out with this question, which is, if the average recruiter, and this number has probably gone out quite a bit given where things are headed with the recession, um, is juggling about 25 jobs and about 250 resumes each, how do they manage it? Let me know in the chat. Is it A, the miracle of caffeine, B, the miracle of technology, or C, maybe those little magical talent elves who sneak into the applicant tracking system after uh, dinner and take care of everything themselves? Well, for anyone who's been a recruiter or thought about it a little bit, you realize as powerful as coffee is, it really does come back to this thing called the applicant tracking system. And this is not a fancy piece of software. This is not ChatGPT. This is a basic database that every company in the world uses to track who's applying for jobs and how far they make it in the process. And so the critical thing that you must understand as a job seeker who wants your own revenge is exactly how the system is set up. So I wanna show you what no one else will ever show you, which is what it looks like behind the scenes. And this is actually a screenshot from JobVite, one of the largest ATSs in the world. And what you can see right away here is the plight of the poor recruiter. You know, imagine being at a company, getting 625 applications for a job, and you start to think to yourself, oh, there goes my nights, there goes my weekends, there go my holidays. I'm gonna be spending all this time just getting through these resumes. Except the ATS will come to the rescue and make it easy to whittle down that list automatically by focusing on match score. And specifically, how much do the resumes of these candidates actually match the things you're looking for in your job description? And so the first thing that I want to do is I want to move all of us away from that job searcher mentality of, let me just have my resume and apply a million times to let me actually be a job hacker, someone who feels empowered to go out there and claim that best job. And to get there and to give you out a free autographed copy of my new LinkedIn book, I would love someone to volunteer and raise their hand on the chat in the participant list and whomever is first will get this first copy of the book. 
So let's see who it's going to be. I'm going to think we're going to go to Maxine. So Maxine, I'm going to give you the ability to unmute. Um, and if you don't mind turning on your uh, microphone and your webcam, I would love to chat with you. All right, Maxine, how are you? Hey there. You just caught me uh, mid-bite. Oh, so sorry. So sorry. Well, I got to say, you would be amazing on Jeopardy, Maxine, because you've got those great trigger fingers. So um, well done. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us where you are in your career, Maxine, and what you're thinking about next. Sure. Um, I'm in Seattle, Washington. Hey. Um, I'm currently on a bit of a career break. Um, I was most recently a policy advisor uh, doing higher education policy. Um, and now I'm looking to um, pivot away. I've always been in the public sector and looking to see what the wider world is uh, like outside of government. Um, so I've been thinking about um, uh, program manager roles in tech um, or maybe just um, roles related to uh, some of my personal interests in uh, biotech or animal advocacy. I love that. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I can tell you've done a lot of internal work, which is the place that you want to start. Like figuring out what are my gifts? What do I love doing? What's going to give me passion in my career? And now we just have to match that to the jobs that are out there in the world. So let's take that program manager role. Now you can imagine that there is an ATS at Google, Amazon, startups, even nonprofit tech companies like Khan Academy, where I work, where it's looking for specific skills when it comes to program managers. Any guesses what those particular skills might be, Maxine? Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, and feel free to unmute when you're ready. If anyone else knows, let us know in the chat. Like maybe you are a program manager. Maybe you're a recruiter for program managers. That's the power of this great network here. Let us know if you've got specific skills that you think would be really important. So Shruti says stakeholder management. Oh, Maxine can't. Un oh, yeah, yeah. I think if you mute Maxine, you lose the ability. Sorry about that. Just something we had to do because of those trolls, unfortunately. Let me give you the ability one more time. There you go. There we go. Sorry about that. Um yeah, like project management, um, stakeholder relations, um, having that having that global view of yeah. the org, of the levers that you need to pull, um, when you can, uh, when you can and should influence others, um, um, and yeah, just kind of having that that global sense of um, you know being the train conductor. When yeah. do you put each part into motion and actuate all the all the different levers, all the um, all the switches. Yeah, I love that. We could probably even crowdsource this from Mark W., from Ben Yarker, everyone is sharing. But what if I told you, Maxine, your career is too important to leave to guesswork. And there is somewhere on LinkedIn where instead of guessing at the most important skills and keywords, recruiters are actually serving them to you on a daily basis. Any guess where that might be? Mm, beats me. Okay, let's see if anyone knows in the chat. Shruti says job descriptions. Yes, Namrita says job descriptions. And you know, this is kind of ironic because so often when we think about job descriptions as job seekers, we just immediately start to fall asleep because we're like, oh no, not one of those again, where it's going to be all these thousands of words that don't make any sense. But if you dig down past all that blah, 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 you will often discover that there are these responsibilities and key skills, things like strategic advocacy programs, um, strategies, cross-functional collaboration, partnership teams. That's the language that you need to speak if you want to get that high match score in the ATS. So Maxine, because you've been such a brave volunteer and you've given up part of your lunch to join us today, what if I were to give you the superpower of x-ray vision right into the ATS algorithm to see how you're doing? Would you be interested? Sure, let's do it. Okay. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to everyone because I love this so much. And this is a tool called jobscan.co. And the reason I prefer jobscan to even LinkedIn or ATSs themselves is it will give you the one thing that LinkedIn will never give you, which is the truth. What's really happening behind the scenes and what you can do about it. And so what we're gonna do, Maxine, is with your permission, I'm just gonna pull up your LinkedIn profile as just as an example of kind of like resume type text. Again, this is completely not about criticism. This is about showering you and your profile with love. Is that okay? Let's do it. Okay, everyone give Maxine tons of love in the chat because that takes tremendous guts. But I got to tell you, it's so much more fun than just reading some bullet points about this. So Maxine, tell me, do you see yourself on this list? I am the fourth hit. On All right, the there you go. Number four, Maxine Chan on LinkedIn. Not bad. 
we'll get you to number one. Um, and so what, what the ATS will do and what your uh, LinkedIn recruiter will do is they will grab all that content from your resume or from your profile, and they will automatically compare it side by side with all the things that these companies are looking for. And by the way, what I would recommend is not just doing a focus on one particular role or one particular company, but a bunch of them. So that way you don't over-index on Google's weird language, but you make sure you cover your bases pretty much across the board. Does that make sense so far? So far, so good. Okay, awesome. So I'm going to grab a couple of these. I'm going to paste them in. And then if I could get a little digital drum roll, please, we are about to reveal Maxine's moment of truth. And again, this is that match score that every ATS is generating, whether we know it or not, but now we get to see what it looks like. And so initially a low match rate, and that's okay, right? Because you're coming from a different background. And you're thinking about how to sort of build up your profile. And the question is what we're gonna do about it. So here are the things that matter most from these job descriptions. And then these red X's are telling us, here's where there's a disconnect between what the recruiter wants and what you're giving them. So let me ask you this, Maxine. Have you ever scaled anything, led ideation, done any kind of marketing, business planning, any kind of research projects, project management, program management, any of that? Uh, everything except for email marketing. Okay, I had a feeling, I had a feeling. When you're in the policy world, you have to wear many hats, I bet. So let's go back to your profile now. And this is true of your resume as well. Where inside this huge document could you start to incorporate some of that language? program management, research projects, ideation? Uh, that could be slotted. Well, like a natural home for that would be in the um, experience under all of my jobs. Um, yeah. And I could also incorporate that into yeah. the evaluation. Absolutely. And I love, by the way, that you've already pasted in your resume bullets because Maxine, big question. If you had a beautiful resume that was sitting on your hard drive, how many times a day is that being seen by recruiters? Oh, countless. No, sorry, zero. Wait, I'm sorry, if it's sitting on my hard drive, yes. Then right, zero. right. And that's, this is the way we fool ourselves as job seekers, right? One of those classic traps. I spent 10 hours working on my resume. I'm so proud of myself. But if it's just sitting there in PDF format, it's not really doing a whole lot for us versus your profile, which is out there, you know, to be scanned millions of times a day, that can do a lot. So I love that you've done that already. Definitely your experience section. Anywhere else you can incorporate some of these skills? Hmm. I mean, there's the skills section. Yeah, and guess what? You're entitled to up to 50 skills on LinkedIn and an unlimited number on your resume, of course. So those could all be here. And guess what? Same as with your resume, your LinkedIn profile is scanned from top to bottom for every piece of text. So you have no bullet points under education or volunteering. If you did project management for a nonprofit where you volunteered, or you had to do research projects as part of your thesis, you should get credit for that. And the only way you're going to do that is if you feed the beast, give the algorithm what it wants, which is keywords. So Maxine, I'm so excited to send you a copy of this book, but I want to give you one little extra homework assignment if you're okay with it. Is that all right? Ah, uh, okay. I, <laughs> Maxine like, is like, can't before, you see all my education, Jeremy? Okay. I'm done with that part of my life. But with my apologies to your amazing profs back at UT, this may be the most important homework you ever do because this is the homework that is most directly connected to getting the job you love. And so as you find time over the next few weeks, don't just build out a generic profile, build out a profile and a resume that are all tailored to the language of the jobs you want. Okay, Maxine? Maxine, you absolutely rocked it. I can't wait to send you a copy of this book. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Oh yeah, Jennifer from U of T says U of T, not to be confused with University of Toledo or any of the other UTs out there. <laughs> well said. Okay, so now, um, I know that we are about halfway through. So Jenny, what if we stop? Because I saw there was a ton of activity in the chat. Were there any questions that came in that you thought might be really interesting to call out that would be useful to a lot of people right now? And actually, let me make sure that Jenny can be unmuted. Sorry about that, Jenny. Um, there you go. All right. Yes, Jesse consistently people asking about how much consistency should their resume have with their LinkedIn profile Ooh. and, um, you know, having been a recruiter, you know, I'm happy to take a stab and then hear your thoughts on that. So, um, you know, 
I'm looking at whatever you submit to me for that actual job requisition. And that job requisition is matching exactly what's being pushed out to LinkedIn or is on our website. And so as I'm, as a human being reading this, it's um, me filtering for what I know that I've had the conversation with the hiring manager, what we've written into that job description is what's coming up. And so if you're doing quick application with your LinkedIn profile, then it needs to match into the, the job description. Or if you're doing a separate resume, you can really, really tailor that resume for that particular job um, application. And I encourage people to do that. Um, yeah, thoughts additionally, Jeremy? No, 100% agreed. And um, yeah, I would say like, when in doubt about these things, talk to folks like Jenny. You know, they've been recruiters and they know exactly what it feels like. Great call out. And, and one of the helps, things, yeah. like from some of that data of like kind of beating the application, so if a recruiter is out there where I as a recruiter was using kind of like search for keywords or algorithms, it was when I was proactively sourcing a candidate who hadn't applied. And I would put in keywords into this other product, LinkedIn recruiter that has this whole robust search feature. And, you know, I would be looking for what you have in your LinkedIn profile, and it would need to be there for you to come up in top result. And some applicant tracking systems will stack rank you in, in the application process, but then other application applicant tracking systems just gather the resumes and it's up to the recruiter manually reading every single one of those. Oh, so, so no, painful. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, there was a question around whether or not LinkedIn premium is mm. a necessity having worked there, Jeremy, you know, what are, what are, what's your point of view on that? Yeah. I'm going to say something that will probably get me in trouble with my old peers, <laughs> but LinkedIn premium, at least for job seekers is a scam. Let me explain why the number two, number, the two things that sort of LinkedIn pitches to people in terms of here's why you have to have premium. It's so important for your job search is number one, you can send in mails now. How great is that? But here's the dirty little secret of LinkedIn. The vast, vast majority of people on LinkedIn are not active. The only people who are, are people like you and me, people who are hiring, people who are searching for jobs. And so if you reach out to someone who's not in that category, they may never see your message. They may have signed up for LinkedIn with an old work email, never updated the site. They may have all of their LinkedIn messages going straight to spam in their Gmail folder. Lots of reasons why even for a hundred bucks a month, you never reach that person. Whereas if you use a tool like hunter.io and you look up the actual email format for that company, so apple.com, linkedin.com, whatever it is, it will tell you the actual pattern without paying a cent. And then number two, there is a corresponding screen inside LinkedIn, just like this, where recruiters like Jenny could see every single potential candidate. And a lot of people believe falsely that if they pay LinkedIn hundred bucks a month, they'll be moved automatically to the top of the list. Nothing could be further from the truth. Here's another dirty little secret. LinkedIn tells job seekers that it says, oh, we want to help you. We want to see you succeed. But at the end of the day, LinkedIn is part of Microsoft and Microsoft is a for-profit public company that must maximize shareholder value. And so given that LinkedIn gets 70% of its revenue from recruiters and only 10% from job seekers, who do you think they're going to bias towards? Absolutely recruiters. If they started messing with that algorithm, with that methodology, just because you bought LinkedIn Premium, LinkedIn business would dry up overnight. And so the reality is LinkedIn Premium will not give you a higher ranking. It will not connect you with the right people. Those are things you can better do on your own through all the techniques we've described for free. And one thing that will bring you up higher in that LinkedIn recruiter account is if you are responsive to people in LinkedIn. So more likely to respond is a category that recruiters see. And then another one is open to opportunities. And so maybe you don't want to have that green semicircle on your profile, but in LinkedIn, you can put open opportunities and just visible to recruiters. Um, and that that is a separate tab that they then see you filtered that way. Absolutely. And obviously there are different use cases. And yep. I also was just pointing out, LinkedIn did partner with Amazon a few months ago to launch as an Amazon Prime student benefit, six months free of premium. So if you can get it for free, more power to you, but I would never pay a cent to that until I'd spent that money on, you know, reaching out to alumni, setting up coffee chats, building real relationships that lead to real results. That's a way higher ROI. Okay. I know we're running sort of low on time. So yep. I want to move on to my next pop quiz for everyone here, which is dun, 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 at the end of the day, having a great resume is a great start, but it's not sufficient to get the job. 
which of these three channels, when you apply for roles, is 10 times more likely to help you succeed than the two other ones? Is it A, applying on the company website, B, applying on LinkedIn, or C, applying with a referral? And pretty much everyone is saying C, including Stanley, Ben, Wendy, Alan, Giannis, Namrita, Marcella. I have to give you big props because you've nailed it. And let me prove it to you straight from the applicant tracking system. So what you're looking at here is data from Jobvite, one of those large ATSs again. And what Jobvite is showing you is that the vast majority of applicants for jobs across industries, countries, years, are all online, career sites and job boards. And that makes sense. They're easy. They're easy for you. They're easy for everyone. The only problem is they're a trap. Just like LinkedIn Premium, they make it seem so tantalizing. And then you look at who actually gets hired through those channels, the results are much lower. And yet, before you give up all hope, pay attention to this first row. Fewer than one in 10 people who are referred by someone on the inside are coming in that way. And yet they are taking up the vast plurality of the one thing that matters most, which is actually getting hired. And so the only question is, if you understand that recruiters are not just looking for keyword matches, but also for the source of applicants, because all things being equal, if Jenny has a bunch of candidates who seem great in theory, and 10 of them are strangers, and one of them has been referred by someone she knows and trusts, of course, Jenny's going to put her own reputation on the line for someone who has that proof. So, Well, and as a recruiter, yeah. I had a service level agreement, like I had to respond to those. Ah, <laughs> interesting. My, my, my job metrics, if I was not responding to um, employee referrals in a timely fashion, I was, I was dinged for it. Absolutely. And so if you want to go from just being a mere job searcher, applying online and getting nowhere to a job hacker, who's getting a 10 X advantage, let's talk about how to do that. So again, anyone who raises their hand right now, will get this opportunity. Tanvir, you were super fast. So Tanvir, feel free to unmute. I would love to chat with you and let's show everyone how it's done. Welcome, Tanvir. Hello, Jeremy. Hello, hello. How are you? Uh, I'm good. How are you? Doing great. Thank you so much for volunteering. Great. Okay, so Thank Tanvir, you. I want you to throw down the gauntlet for me. Tell me the name of a company you might want to work for someday if mm -hmm. only it wasn't so hard to break into. Okay, uh, that would be McKinsey and Company. Yeah, of course, the big <laughs> McKay. And um, uh, Jenny knows all about that because she works with business school students and they all fetishize the same company. Yes, we do. And we that's love That's right. That. I, um, I work for Mick Darden. Um, Mick yes. Darden, that's right. Exactly, exactly. Tanvi, are you currently a student? Um, yes, I am. Where are you going to school? Uh, I'm here in Dublin, UCD. Uh, Smurfit, oh, you have to, cool. uh, you you had a workshop. Uh, I think it was uh, in the last trimester, a few months back, and I absolutely loved it. So here I am again for a refresh. Oh, thank you so much for joining, especially so late in the evening. I really appreciate that. Yep. <laughs> thank okay, you. Okay, so Tanvir, we're going to get you that referral at McKinsey because that's the best way mm -hmm. to break down those walls. And of course, mm -hmm. we have to start by knowing who even works at McKinsey. So the first thing we're going to do is we pull up McKinsey's page on LinkedIn. We ignore all the corporate propaganda as much as McKinsey wants to share that. And we focus on the one thing that matters, who can actually get us a job there. And here's the really good news, Tanvir. There are almost mm -hmm. 40,000 people at McKinsey on LinkedIn. But the bad news is that's a lot of people. So what should we filter for here, Tanvir, to find the people at McKinsey who can help you and who want to help you? Mm -hmm. What kind of filters do you want to apply? Uh, that would be the ex-students, the alumni. Ah, so people who went to UCD. School. Yep. Okay. So in this case, Tanvir is a student at UCD. And obviously this applies to anyone, whether you're a student or alum. And so there it is, University of College Dublin. We say show results and voila, there are 57 people from Dublin all the way to the Bay Area. Now, let's say you wanted to get in touch with Emmett over there. Would you mm -hmm. recommend reaching out directly, Tanvir? Or is there a better way to get in touch with him that might be almost guaranteed? Um, I connect with him and uh, as an introductory message, that's what I think of. Yeah, so I think that's a great approach. But check out what Mitra said and what Mark W said, which is, again, the power of LinkedIn is not just who you know, it's who they know. And it turns mm -hmm. out that if you happen to know Margaret, maybe you say, Margaret, would you mind introducing me to Emmett? And Margaret reaches out to Emmett and says, hey, I know Tanvir, who's this rising star in the strategy space. You've got to spend a few minutes with him 
because he's going to be a rock star at McKinsey someday. Emmett says, no problem, Margaret, anything for you. Happy to help a friend. So now you've got your guaranteed chance to connect with Emmett through the power of the mm -hmm. mutual connections. And mm -hmm. what, what are you going to do in that conversation, Tanvir? Are you going to come in guns blazing and ask for the referral right away? Or is there a better um, approach? No, uh, a better approach uh, would be asking how they did what they did and then yeah. more of a mentoring. That's what I would think of. Yeah, I love that. I love that M word, mentoring. Not just McKinsey, but actually <laughs> building a relationship where he feels like he's paying it forward to the next generation. And so you ask him about his career, his journey, what it's been like on the inside. And before you know it, 15 or 20 minutes is up. Do you hang up that phone, Tanvir, and just say, hey, have a good life, Emmett? Or is there another way to keep the conversation going? Um, there has to be another way. I can't think of one right now. Yeah. Let's see if anyone in the chat has some ideas. Um, what could uh, Tanvir say at the very end of the conversation with Emmett that plants the seed for a future conversation? So obviously a great uh, thank you note, Vaughn. I love that. Mark does that sort of like pyramid scheme guide to networking. Hey, who else should I talk to? Um, what I hmm. would say, is just a simple sort of putting the foot on the door and saying, Emmett, this has been an amazing conversation. If it's okay for you, I'd like to ask for one last favor. Do you mind if we stay in touch? I'd love to sort of let you know how I apply your advice. And I will tell you, as mm -hmm. an alum myself, where students never follow up with me, that is amazing because you're already standing out. You're showing that you're more interested in a long-term conversation than a one-off transaction. Does that feel doable so far, Tom Beer? Um, Yes, it does. Okay, so now. Let's say that Emma introduced you to some people or Emma told you, hey, read this blog post about McKinsey's new guide to strategy and sustainability. If you read that blog post, if you talk to the people he introduces you to, do you let Emmett know about that? Um, yes. Why, why? Uh, it would show him I'm actually willing to put in the effort and when time comes, there's chance of a referral. Exactly, because here's the, here's the dirty little truth of referrals. I'm a former kindergarten teacher. You know, I'm a nice guy. But Tanvir, after having spoken to about a thousand students at my alma mater who wanted jobs at Apple or Google or Khan Academy, how many referrals have I given out over the years? A few hundred at least. I wish I would because I'd be a richer man today and I'll explain why in a second, <laughs> but probably only a couple dozen. And again, not because I'm a Scrooge, hopefully, but because people just never followed up or stayed in touch or proved themselves wow. to me in the way you're talking about. And so the fact that you're demonstrating the very virtues that McKinsey craves, great listener, great communication, great responsibility, great follow-up, that's the stuff that McKinsey wants to put in front of CEOs some days. That's what Emmett's looking for. Now, let's talk about April, 2023. Your dream job pops up on the McKinsey website. You could apply online, although we know what the stats look like when you do that, or you could be that job hacker who gets a referral. How do you get a referral, Tanvir? What's the last step of this process? Mm -hmm. What do you say? I would suggest, as, um, maybe I can start with, I've done, uh, be very subtle about it that I've followed what you have told me. I've understood what McKenzie does. And this is the role that I've been looking for that's there on the, po as, on the listing. So would you mind referring me or would you know someone who could do that? Okay. So never ever go down the other road of like, hey, introduce me to someone else. Because again, you've built up the social capital with Emmett, but definitely be explicit and say, hey, I would love it. It would be an incredible honor if you wouldn't mind referring me. If so, here's my resume. And if not, no worries. It's just been great learning from you. And I'd love to stay in touch regardless. So there's no pressure involved. But what will Emmett get if he refers you and you're hired, Tanvir? Why is he very likely to say yes at this point? Bonus. Bonus, yes. And I know as MBAs, we tend to think that way, but also he's going to get good karma, right? He's going to get a big high yeah. five from you know, his partners and from the hiring team and the recruiters. So ultimately, whether you're driven by money, whether you're driven by relationships, it's all for the good. It's truly a win-win. And Tanvir, speaking of win-win, you've not only helped yourself because I'm going to send you a copy of this book, but you've helped me because <laughs> you just demonstrated the single most important thing any job seeker can do and you rocked it. Thank you so much, Tom Veer. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Beautifully done. Okay, everyone, please shower Tom Veer with love because that takes guts and he crushed it. Now, um, before we move on, Jenny, anything else you want to call about referrals from your recruiting days 
or any other questions you want to call out from the chat? Yeah. So one thing that I see people asking, like, does it have to be, you know, an MBA that gives yeah, a referral yeah. or a product person or the thing, right? Like, no, like it can be someone who um, is the front desk greeter or in accounting or, you know, as long as they're an FTE, they can be that employee referral. Now, if you're thinking I have no five people there and I need to be a referral and you have the the problem of, you know, you know, it's just who's going to be most likely to actually do it and follow through. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it really is that Venn diagram, right, Jenny? Like you need someone who's plugged into the company, obviously on that side, but also plugged into you in the sense that they want to help you. Yeah. And so it doesn't have to be a business school connection, but if they're a friend of a friend or they yep. volunteer with the same organizations as you do, find something that you have in common that yep. often becomes the bridge into that next world. Absolutely. And just to be really clear, um, number one, yes, this recording will be made available, but stay tuned for one more book giveaway. And number two, this applicant tracking system that we were talking about, yes, it's primarily used by recruiters, but every employee of every company in the world can also access it to submit a referral. So for example, at Khan Academy, I go into our ATS, I upload Tanvir's resume automatically in five seconds, he's referred with my name on it. And so just so you know, to Johnny's point, anyone can refer practically anyone. Great, great, great point. Okay, I know we're down to our last couple of seconds here. So final piece. I know the Super Bowl is coming up for those of you in America. And at the end of the big game, there's gonna be an MVP nominated. Maybe Patrick Mahomes, maybe Jalen Hurts, depending on your favorite team. But who would you nominate for MVP of the hiring process? So if you think about that recruiter, if you think about the hiring manager, if you think about the referrer, who gets the nod at the end of the day for just having the most skin in the game, for being most invested in this process? I see a lot of different opinions. Some say recruiters, some say refers, but the majority are saying BBB, Bavana, Sarah, Hope, Crystal, Sanjay, Elvin. And as a hiring manager myself, I tend to agree with you. Because here's the reality about recruiters, and I'll see what Danny thinks about this. Recruiters, if you just think about their incentives, have too much on their plates, too many roles to fill, to be 100% focused on any one specific role. If you've got 25 jobs that you've got to get filled up with, you can't be completely aligned with that particular role. You've got to get ready to move on to the next one, and the next one, and the next one, because there's always a next one. Whereas a hiring manager, I might have only one headcount to fill the entire year, and that hire can make or break my team. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. If I hire someone great, they take work off my plate, they make me look great in front of my boss, maybe I even take a vacation this year. Great things can happen when you hire great people. But if I hire the wrong person, think about the domino effect. I ruin the culture of my team, I gotta put them on a probation plan, now I'm doing layoffs, now I'm rehiring and retraining. That's a lot of skin in the game, and that's a lot of pain. And so here's the reality. We tend to fetishize the recruiter because they're often the face of the company. And we don't ever meet the hiring manager almost until it's too late at the end of the interview process. And yet, I'm going to tell you about a brand new hack that will help you from going just in the applicant tracking system, just to, you know, matching the keywords to really getting to the actual decision maker at the end of the day who can change the course of your life. And so if you want to participate in this last live role play, just be the first person to raise your hand right now and you'll claim the last copy of this book. And that person is gonna be you, Stanley. Stanley, you are on it. So feel free to unmute, turn on your webcam if you like, and let's make this happen. Welcome, Stanley. Hey, great, Jeremy, thank you. Thank you so much for joining. Stanley, tell me a little bit about yourself. Where are you yes. in your career? What's, what's going on with you? Uh, I'm an investor relations professional. I was laid off about three months ago. Oh, no. And so I'm looking for my next opportunity as uh, a head of investor relations for a publicly listed company, uh, targeting small uh, to mid cap companies in the TMT sector. And I've got a live example I can share with you. Oh, of, yeah, please you know, do. Sort of a hiring man. So I know that there is an opportunity, the small, software company in Denver called Skillsoft. Yeah. Um, and uh, I I can take a look at my, my spreadsheet here and see who the hiring manager is. Usually I'm trying to attract CFOs. Um, and so um, the guy's name is Rich. Just want to see mm -hmm. if I can find his details so we can see how to how to contact him directly. Yeah. I think the yeah. direct approach would be the best. Yeah, so let's, let's talk about that. And I'll even show you another approach to discover opportunities you didn't know existed. Yeah. So for example, let's say you know, for instance, there's this guy, Rich, who's in investor relations. 
if you already know that he's the boss, then guess what? You can just reach out to him directly because you already have that insider intel. But here's the trick, Stanley. A lot of times people don't know who the hiring manager is. And so in that case, let me show you another thing that has happened recently is a lot of hiring managers like myself are getting like really grumpy, especially with the great resignation and all of that that has happened where we're like, we're not getting the best people. How do we find better people? Well, you know what? We're going to go around the recruiters ourselves. We're going to put up our own help wanted signs on LinkedIn. And so, yeah, as Elvin said, pay more. I totally agree, Elvin, for, for what it's worth. But that being said, what you're going to see now on LinkedIn for the first time is hiring managers coming out of the woodwork saying, guess what? I'm not a recruiter. I'm actually your future boss, global head, founder, group manager, CTO. These are the people who with one stroke of their pen could make you an offer. And so question for you, Stanley, let's say for instance, that you were interested in this role at Amy's firm where she's the founder. If you want to get in touch with Amy, send her a message, obviously you could do it on LinkedIn, you could do it through Hunter, but what would that message say? Would it be kind of the messages we were talking about of like, hey, Amy, great to connect, would love to chat with you. Or is there something more specific you might send her? No, I think it would be more immediate. Yes. I mean, it would be that, you know, there's an opportunity and here's the two or three reasons really short why I fit the bill. And do you have 10 or 15 minutes to talk? Yes. Oh, so right. Because if you think about Amy, the way that marketers think about their customers, what's Amy's pain point, Stanley? Oh, she's just overwhelmed, right? Yes. Like she's got the startup it's growing fast. She has more to get done than she can do herself or her team can do. And so against that pain, against that giant headache, you are her Tylenol. You're her Advil, Stanley. Because she is putting out this cry for help. And instead of responding with, hey, I just really want to work at your company, you're telling her what you can do for her, how you can make her pain go away. So that is the one-two punch that I love. Find people who are hiring, find their specific job descriptions, and then feed them back exactly what they need. So for example, in the IR space, what are some of the big things that you look for in an IR leader, Stanley? What kind well, of skills? You look, yeah, you look for someone that's strategic, that's proactive, that's demonstrated certain capabilities. Um, so, you know, I would just, you know, try to, to keep it, um, you know, pretty simple. Um, I saw that you, hey, you know, Amy, I saw that you had this opportunity. I have these particular attributes that come from your job description that right. I have some metrics around. Do you have 10 or 15 minutes to, to reach out? Yes, absolutely. And just to answer, I think Meg in the chat said, could you give an example of what you say? It doesn't have to be fancy. It's not Shakespearean sonnet. You could even have ChatGPT compose this answer or give you a template for it. But the bottom line is, let her know, hey, I see you, I hear you, I feel your pain, and here's what I'm going to do for you. And I will tell you, as a hiring manager myself, this is like manna from heaven. Because I am so sick of going to interviews that are set up by recruiters where there's just not a fit, where the person on the other side of the table doesn't get what I need. And if someone can cut through that clutter and solve that pain, they are well on their way to the job. Because at the end of the day, and you know this so well, Stanley, a referrer can help you, a recruiter can help you, but who can make you a job offer? The hiring manager. The hiring manager, gotta, right. That's, gotta go that's through the that. call. Yep. So I, I love that you demonstrated that, Stanley. I got to thank you so much for the copy of this book. Is there anything else I can do for you? Any other questions you have, Stanley? Is it, is it just sort of a, a Boolean search like that? Just, you know, in quotes, I'm hiring, or do you, you know, try to have pair the I'm hiring with a particular company or with a particular, you know, other, other phrase? I mean, how, how do we try to really micro target this? Oh, I love that. So what Stanley's talking about for those who are new to this idea of Boolean search is like, how do you bring multiple facets together in your search to find the exact right person? So in this case, you know, there's an assumed and um, between anything that you list in the search box. So this is people who are, I'm hiring and have investors somewhere on their profile, maybe part of investor relations. But you could also uh, uh, basically apply that to, show me everyone who's hiring at Amazon or show me everyone who's hiring um, in the Tel Aviv area, right? Like whatever your particular focus might be, you can always layer these on to build a cake that really gives you the exact perfect person. Great question, Stanley. Cool. Okay, Stanley, I love that. Thank you so much. I'm so Thank sorry you, to hear about the layoff, but you know, someone said this in the chat a minute ago. 
sometimes even though layoffs feel like they're at the exact wrong time, sometimes they give us a chance to have freedom to step back and do the stuff we really love doing. So I wish you all that and more. Okay, Stanley? All right. So Jenny, I know we are down to the very, very end. I just yeah. want to give people a quick reminder about what we just covered in the last segment, Yep. which is there's so much you can do on LinkedIn. There's so much you can do as a job speaker. It can get so overwhelming. But I want to just give you three things and one bonus piece, which is number one, the very first cut is always based on keywords. So know your keywords, get them into your profile, get them into your resume. Number two, why go with a stranger when you can go with a trusted friend, get that referral. And number three, why rely on someone who can't actually make you an offer when you can go straight to the person who can't. And if you ever want any more information about the book or getting your own free LinkedIn profile review, I will put that in here. And of course, I would love to connect with anyone from today's session. Feel free to send me a connection request. Um, and if you want a copy of the book, just mention that in your message and I will send it out this afternoon. Okay, back to you, Jenny. Um, Jeremy, uh, if you want to click on that link there, you can pull oh, up the Inventbrite series. Absolutely. Um, so you don't have to put me back as host. Okay. Um, because I'm going to be back next week with the amazing Melina Messerina. And she has the company Stellar Peers, um, great um, background in the tech sector, in career coaching. I'll be adding in the rest of um, my amazing um, presenters here, um, communicating through here, the recordings. Um, and so um, again, this is, you know, way to pay it forward, give back. And I'm happy to continue this series along. So Jeremy, thank you so much for being my, um, being patient with me through all of this and, and my my fumbles to MVP, get it out there. And we hope we've helped a lot of you today and don't hesitate to come back and see what else we have to say with my other, my other great partners. And I just want to give a huge shout out to Jenny. Um, one of the things that I always tell my team at Khan Academy is that shipping beats meeting. And Jenny <laughs> is building a brand new um, series of offerings here. And I know there's all that bad energy out there in the world. But I love that everyone stuck through that, rolled through the punches. And I love, love, love where we're headed um, in this new year and beyond. So big congrats to Jenny. Good luck to everyone out there. And please, um, here's wishing you all tremendous success. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Hope to see some of you next week.